Hi, this is Almira at with Cape Town Emergency Medicine and this is the final and fourth part of our video series on rapid sequence intubation. I just want to show you a few detailed aspects of the mechanics of intubation, starting off with the correct use of an intubating stylet. If you decide to use a formable or introducer or stylet device, take your ET tube, insert it along the ET tube, and take care that it should not pass beyond the edge, but rather stop just before the edge of the tube. Now bend the stylet over at the edge to prevent it from migrating deep in, and then bend another little loop, making a secure hole for you to pull this out. In this way you can easily grasp and remove the intubating stylet, and at the same time it will not pass beyond the edge of the tube. Even though the ET tube is now removed from the packaging for me to demonstrate the skill to you, in reality you would keep it inside the packaging, opening only the one end to give access for the stylet. Please refer to video part 3 for proper handling of equipment around intubation. Once the stylet has been introduced into the ET tube, there are many different ways that you could mold it. The classic way is a simple curve. Many clinicians now prefer what is called the hockey stick configuration where the ET tube is bent like a hockey stick close to the end and kept relatively straight. How close you bend it to the edge of the tube is up to personal preference and the side of the patient. On this particular ET tube please note these two dark markers called the vocal cord markers and when intubating it's prudent to allow the vocal cords to rest between those two giving added visual feedback on correct placement of the tube. Another little trick is to draw up the amount of air you need to inflate the cuff and attach the syringe at this point in time so that it's easy to hand when you need to inflate it. In terms of volume, if your ET tube does not give you an actual volume on it, inflate the cuff with the, approximately the amount of milliliters of air of the tube size. In this case a 7.5 tube and I've drawn up 7.5 milliliters of air. Place the ET tube next to the patient on your right hand side or your dominant hand side and use your laryngoscope on the non-dominant hand. Grasp your laryngoscope in the non-dominant hand as shown. Open the blade and make sure that the light is working. You would now position your patient and you would insert the blade into the right side of the mouth, sweeping the tongue to the left and then gently advance the blade along the curve of the tongue until you reach the epiglottis. Please Note that you should never tilt the ET tube in order to visualize the airway as this can cause soft tissue damage in the pharynx as well as teeth damage up here in the mouth. You should rather pull the whole entire device in the direction that the handle is showing. So if you advance it down until you can see the epiglottis and then pull the device up, you visualize the vocal cords and then pass the intertracheal tube through. Note the depth of insertion, in this case 22 centimeters at the teeth, and inflate your cuff. Remove and discard the syringe, maintain secure grip of your ET tube, and take out your stylus. Connect your CO2 detector device, and after that your bag valve mask device, and confirm correct placement of the tube. For further details around intubation and post-intubation care, please refer to video 3 in our series on rapid sequence intubation. And that's it. Thank you very much.